Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, the Copper Owl, bringing you a very interesting review because I have always intended to review blaster attachments because that's why I have an attachment section in my review sheet. And I am wasting paper. But, yeah, it's, um, I am actually reviewing the Nerf Stampede ECSX Blast Shield. Um, why am I doing that? Because I discovered something quite interesting about it. That I didn't really ever consider. I found it today for a dollar at the Google Outlet. I paid $6 because I got a briefcase as well. A perfectly brand new briefcase. Somebody threw out a perfectly good briefcase. I complained about that. Anyway, onto the ad. Buy my book, The Epic of Cassius Crossroads, at authorhouse.com or barnesandnobles.com. Get the physical copy or the ebook. Now that, take yourself to wild adventures. Anyway, so let's get down to it. So, I like it on the um, flight. So, so, this is an interesting blush because it doesn't always... Um, it has its own unique club system. Because it can't necessarily slide sometimes onto the attachments. And because of its shape, it doesn't fit on every single blaster. So, for But I tested it out on several of the... Um, Elite 2.0 blasters. It works on a warden. Doesn't work on a rough cut. It technically works on a strife if you put it on the under attachment, but it doesn't work on the phoenix. It works on the storm charge though, and it works on the um, cyclone shock or whatever it's called, that pump action drum one. But it was the strife test that made me really want to make this video, because as you all know, the strife has an under attachment. I don't know why I didn't just bring a strife, but it has this under attachment rail. And so when you do this, you get this result. And let's be honest, that's kind of stupid. Because the blast shield is supposed to protect your face. You're not supposed to use it like this whatsoever. But here I am using it like this. And that got me thinking... This is the best shield ever because I realized it's not really wobbling on this. It wobbles on everything else very much. So, but it's not wobbling on that. It's not, give me a second. And it's not wobbling on the flight. And it's like both ways work pretty well for the blaster. But then it's like, because I know how actual firearms work and how to take down a target and all that, but from long ranges and everything, and you don't want it protecting your face. When you, you you're wearing, you're supposed to wear eye protection anyway, but it's like your body is the biggest target, not your head. It's not like in movies where they want the headshot or the video games. It's your body that's the actual, like, big target they want to hit. Because a 50 caliber bullet's going to kill you anyway. I don't know that, but it's like a mega... But a mega dart it, going to your head, like, yeah, that's going to sting it when it hits you. But it's like... The um, mega dart's likely going to go for your chest. So it was just a slight nudge, bang. You got blocked it. But when it's on top, you're more exposed. That's what I thought was interesting. That this shield is better upside down than it is upwards. And that's why I wanted to review it because just for discovering that so obviously it's an accessory but it's a nice meaty accessory it does its job to protect your face but when i hold it and i'm look and i it's like those that stuff is actually pretty good 
I have my face right there, and I'm looking at it. But to be honest, when it comes to using the shield and all that, it's like, it's not the... Not the best because you now you're losing all your POV versus this, where you still got get in there some protection. I'm gonna put the camera there again. You still got some protection for your face. If this was a perfect square, this thing would have been a lot better. You got your and you got your your um. Iron side and all that. So, you still got that, a little bit of that protection. Not as much, but you still got it. So, as an accessory, it's, I actually, it's pretty imposing too, but it doesn't fit everything, so it's an okay accessory. I gotta put a check mark, because I, I don't want to waste paper. It has no FPS. It's not a sling attachment point. Comfort, this thing could pinch you. If it's on the wrong blaster. Like some the blasters that have rails right here. If this thing's in the way of your hand, you can't even use like here's an example. I got a blaster right here for it. For you. The the outbreaker bolt bow. It does fit on it, but it's super wobbly. But it's like, my hand wants to go right here, and I can't really do that. And everything. So, yeah, you can see that. So, comfort. I want to say it's okay. Because it could be bad. Looks, again, this thing looks pretty intimidating. This thing looks like a kind of right shield. Imagine this painted up all gray. Like that color of gray and all that. That would be cool. I don't even know if this is like an Icon series one or an original one. I, I honestly think this might be any. No, no, this is original. Made in 2009. Unless they used the same mold and have the same date on them. Yeah, this is a, an original one. Huh. The plastic is pretty flimsy, though. So it looks cool. Profile. Dude. Actual firearms have this? I don't know. I don't think actual firearms have shields. I, because I don't think I've ever seen one. I think that's only a video game movie thing. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Don't. But I could see it looking a bit more tactical. On all that, if it was painted all black. Tactical points, it is a tactical point. But it's an interesting one with that thing because, again, they really thought of, like, oh, this thing might not... This thing's not going to work on everything, so let's have that. So I... I say it's good. Can't use any of those, but can we attach this onto the rocket? Keep in mind, some Mega Blasters probably hold onto this thing, too. I just don't know which ones. I haven't tested it. And that's a no. It can't fit on the rocket launcher. Maybe if you had a riser. Look. See? Too wide. Maybe there was a riser or something. Like you put a scope on it. And not that. I do have a mega blaster nearby, but no, no, I'm not gonna go pick it up. So rockets is a no, mega's a no. You can't use it for that. Well, you know what? I gotta do it. I'm gonna pause it. So, it does work on this Mega Double Breach. But not any other Mega Blasters that I own. Yeah. So, it does get in the way of your hand, so there is that comfort issue. As you can see right there. So, there's that. What am I doing? I'm picking the wrong one. So, Mega, it's okay, because you can actually work on one. My eyes are betraying me. No internals. Mod, mod ability, uh, I don't know, practicality. I think that it's actually practical. Price? This thing came with the with the Stampede. So, original Stampede, $50. One at Ross, $25. Got this for a dollar. Um... 
the Stampede are pretty good looking blaster. I haven't reviewed it yet. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, it's the next review. Okay? I just wanted to talk about this individually. That's why I'm going to reuse this paper for the Stampede. Not that. So, price, I'm going to say it's it's actually good for a dollar. So, it's a bit interesting. Tied. I actually think this is really good. But, again, if we don't count any of the other ones. One. Two. It's a tie. It's just okay. I guess it's a, just a preference thing. So this is the only one that's ever tied. And it is an attachment. But is it a, an attachment for your primary, secondary, and extra? Of course it's for your primary. And all that. But should you buy it? Should you skip it? The thought that occurred to me when it comes to the buying and the skipping part came with you could effectively use this with the scout in the most effective way possible. You can still pull it back, but it does dislodge it because your hand's in the way. Okay. Mixed with your flywheel blaster, you have a shield to protect you that you could use multiple different ways that could also fire a dart. And that's what I, that's, this thing is actually really good. It has so many different, so many different things you could do with it. That's just being your face shield, and just being a body shield, as being a secondary shield. The thing I just did with those two blasters was actual fencing technique. Fencers, if you don't know, have tiny shields because in fencing, it's um, it's a jabby, very jabby. So they have the little shields to protect themselves. They don't need a big shield. They need a little one because of the form style. That's why like when you have two swordsmen go up against each other with different techniques, one might beat the other because the other style is is based more around um, countering this kind of thing and all that. So, and me doing that, would it, it could have just this little blast, a little blaster up to my chest and my flywheel up front and s acting similar to a fencer and all that, while at the same time being able to turn this with other hand made me completely change my mind about what this thing is. This is by far one of the most useful attachments you could ever have. And I found a blaster I'm going to put this on. So, this is a buy. You find these, you buy these. Okay? I'm going to keep a lookout for these now. I do want a Sonic green one and all that, but it's like, yeah, this is a buy. So, thank you all very much in my copper army. May you all have a nice day. Bye-bye.